<laughs> so today we are going to I gotta figure out the cool way to, to start my videos. Greetings and salutations. John here guys and today we are going to this call maybe record it for quality purposes. So we're going to night spot and I wanted to test fancy Chris Rosser carbon. Night spot is about 50 minutes drive for me but if you like drone racing, you gotta be always ready for a little bit of driving and sometimes even a lot of driving. So this is our Houston night spot. We got a little track set up. Here we got Johnny5, famous YouTube star with 9,000 subscribers right here. Joe Mama, professional oh HD0 <laughs> <professional laughs> HD pilot right here. Mr. Sam, night spot ambassador. Every week at least once he brings gates, he brings generators for five years at least, right? Five four or five years. years. Everybody's welcome. Yeah. And I even took my glasses off. If you have guy like this in your town, you are very lucky. And if you don't, well, maybe you gotta become him. So because we're gonna talk about like resonances and vibrations, let me call to my resonance expert. And let's see what we got here. Hey, that's my drone. No, that's my phone. Hey, Mr. Neil. Oh. Hello. Oh, Yvonne. If you got like bad vibes or like resonance problems in your life really that are like what you got to do is it's just breathe in breathe in breathe in tune it out tune it out tune it out breathe in breathe in so we got regular carbon arms from hypernovafpv.com and we got a bunch of Chris Rosser carbon arms from uh, CNC Madness and we're gonna put these arms first here to make sure they're brand new and record some black box with gyroscaled and then we're gonna put Chris Rosser carbon arms then compare the noise profile and see if we're getting any difference of course we could use these arms without replacing but I want to make sure they're brand new so it's gonna be a lot of like screw twisting today all right, we're going on the line. It's not gonna be any crazy racing or freestyle because I want to make sure I don't crash it because if I crash it can mess up the motor and change the picture of the noise and we don't want that. We want fair comparison. Right, Johnny Five? Well, if it's not that fair, at least it could be entertaining. So now four packs of random stuff. I was trying to repeat the same pattern from battery to battery, but you know, of course not gonna show you all these four boring packs. But check out this little installation in the corner. If you don't know how to do that, I got a video for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves here in the second round of tonight's main event. We have five challengers chasing your first ace holder, Johnny Five. Arm your quads. Going live on my tone in less than five. Go! We also had a little bit of racing fun for a big bag of props from HQ, but I will let Johnny5 to cover it in his channel. Check it out, link in the description. You gotta be happy though. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, night spot is over. It's 2 a.m. Mr. Cole wants to go sleep. And it's time to go check the black box. I'm not going to fool you, this is two days later, because I'm lazy. And we are going to use PID Toolbox, a beautiful program by Mr. Brian White for deep, very, very deep black box analyzing. Link to this program in the description. So what you see here are power spectral density plots. It says it right here. I have just read it. Horizontal axis is frequency from 0 to 800 Hz. Vertical axis is noise power. Well, not only noise, but, but noise power. And we have separate plots for roll, pitch and yaw. The very dark red line is the gyro before all the beta flight filters on the regular carbon. The red and orange are gyro spectrum plots on Chris Rosser carbon with unidirectional fiber layers. On the regular 5 inch drone, after about 50 plus hertz, the lower the plot, the better. Of course, it cannot be absolutely zero because we got motor noise, we got frame resonances, we got even a little bit of electrical noise and all these is reflected here. But for this experiment, we got the same drone, not just identical, it is the same drone with the same motors, with the same props, same flight controller. The only thing different is carbon for the arms. Do you see any difference in the plots? Honestly, I don't. Like you can see the regular carbon here is a little bit higher, but then here is a little bit lower. Again, here is a little bit higher. Here is a little bit lower. We got a spike on yaw at 320 Hz, but 
don't matter which carbon, the spike is still there with the same power. We got some small spikes on roll and pitch at 240 Hz. And you can see here the regular carbon is a little bit higher, but then again here is a little bit lower. Let's check the frequency throttle spectrogram. The horizontal axis here is throttle, the vertical axis is frequency, and the color reflects the power of the vibrations. So the darker the color, the better. We have again roll, pitch, and yaw from top to bottom. And also on the left side this is regular carbon, and then on the right side there are two flights on the Chris Rosser carbon. The sort of diagonal pattern in all of these pictures, this is the motor noise. See like here, and here diagonal, and here diagonal. And you can see as you move throttle up, the frequency also moves up because the motors are spinning faster, so this is expected. The frame resonances here are shown as horizontal lines because this frequency does not change as you move throttle, only the intensity changes. So frame resonances are usually like horizontal line with one bright spot on it. So you see 240 Hz on, on pitch and 320 Hz on yaw, like everywhere. The bright spot on horizontal line is where your motor noise intersects with the frame resonance. And this defines the throttle where you have the strongest frame resonance. For me you see it's somewhere around 30 to 50%. This video is taking a little bit longer than I wanted. And that's totally my fault. I just decided to show some of you guys the very, very, very basics of black box noise analyzing. And I think that could be helpful for some of you guys. So please like, subscribe and share because you don't want to trigger this guy. Like and subscribe now. Now, is it all bad and horrible? <laughs> Not really. On a 5 inch drone. If you have frame resonance below 200 Hz, then that could be concerning. If you have frame resonance below 120 Hz, then just it's bad, just pack your bags. And I think here my lovely open racer really shines. The link to this frame will be in the description. I'm not selling this frame, it is open source, anyone can sell, use it, modify whatever, but if you want to donate, there is a, like a little button. There are multiple different canopies, multiple for analog, for DJI, for HD0, canopies for GoPro mount, everything is available to download, to print, to cut, whatever you want to do with it. And if you decide to build this frame, make absolutely sure that all these screws here are tight. This is very critical, especially on this frame. I've seen so many people having problems, just because they didn't tighten the screws. But let's get back to unidirectional carbon. On the left side is regular carbon and two columns on the right side is unidirectional carbon. Do you see any difference? Honestly, I don't. By the way, it's really hard to compare these pictures from the different people because depending on what you do with your sticks and how hard you send your drone, this picture could be way more noisy or way more clean. Alright, so this was suspicious. So I sent all of these files and pictures to Mr. Brian White, the developer of PID Toolbox himself. Then we had a Zoom call, that was pretty cool. And he said that I was doing it all wrong. And the problem is that I didn't perform a repeatable experiment. And while these plots are sort of similar, they still could be different because I don't do exactly the same stick movements. It's just impossible. This is two minutes flights. Sometimes I move my sticks faster, sometimes more throttle, like at 20% and less throttle at 80%, sometimes it's vice versa, so I have to perform a repeatable experiment, and here is what he suggested. I need to arm my drone and then hover, and then slowly move throttle from hover to 100% in about 10 to 20 seconds without any input from the other sticks. But the problem is that in 20 seconds this drone will be like in stratosphere, and here we have like FAA regulations. So this is what I was doing the next evening. It's very loud. 
After that I had multiple black box recordings and each one of them had multiple 2 or 3 throttle ramp ups inside. PID toolbox is very cool and instead of analyzing the whole black box I can trim out everything except the area when I slowly increase throttle. And here are the new plots. What do you think? I don't know. Looks the same. Maybe here regular carbon and dark is a little bit worse but then here is a little bit better. The frequency throttle plots are also sort of the same. You can see the yaw resonance at 320Hz is still there, like a little resonance. So it looks like fancy unidirectional fiber layer carbon does not help that much. Well, at least for open racer frame, because the noise picture here is already pretty good. I messaged to Chris Rosser himself and he sort of confirmed that the arm carbon will only make a difference to frame resonances, so there we go. In the description I left Chris Rosser video about this carbon and also Johnny5 review, so check them out. A couple of words about this carbon durability, nothing scientific though, it's just my experience. If you fly with this carbon over grass, then the durability is pretty comparable with a regular carbon. But if you like to crash into concrete, then you will grind the arm ending way faster than the regular carbon. Also these little slots, let's see... Yeah, these little slots, they don't really work good on this fancy carbon. It breaks right here, and this doesn't really happen with the regular carbon. Also, the little chips from this carbon when it breaks are way more nasty than from the regular carbon. But if your frame benefits from this carbon for the arms, hey, I'm not the judge here. See you in the next video, if I'm not lazy.